All right, what I want to do now is I want to talk about the prokaryotic cell, and I want to give some of the general features. So common test question, here you go. Um, discuss the similarities and difference, be, differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Give me five similarities or, or two similarities and five differences or something along those lines. But this is all common stuff, okay? This is the kind of stuff that you're going to be asked to know uh, and to know cold, rather. So... Prokaryotic cells have a rigid cell wall, and they also have a cell membrane. So they have a cell wall, which is interesting because most animal cells don't. They have cytoplasm that contains DNA in a nucleoid. And the nucleoid, don't get it confused with the nucleus, it's not a membrane-bound structure. It's just a region of the cell where the DNA can be found. And they have a 70S ribosome, okay? And the 70S ribosome is different from the eukaryotic ribosome, which is an 80S ribosome. And for those of you that don't know, the 30S small subunit of the ribosome, um, the 70S ribosome, has 16S ribosomal RNA. 16S ribosomal RNA is the RNA that is used to find the three domains of life by Carl Woese. So that's an interesting fact. Um, prokaryotic cells have no membrane that protects their DNA, so that's something to, if you were to compare. Okay, prokaryotic cell, no, member, no membrane-bound nucleus. Okay, that's important. There's also no membrane-bound organelles, um, which is also important. They have a single circular chromosome of double-stranded DNA, so they have single circular chromosome, double-stranded DNA, which is compacted by a process of supercoiling. If you know about how eukaryotic DNA is taken care of, it's taken care of in a different process, and it's and it's um, it's basically compacted by a process with, that involves his, complexes with histone proteins. Okay, so there's no histone proteins either. Another, um, another difference. Um, and they replicate once for each cell division, the, the, DNA, the DNA that is. And DNA is also attached to the envelope, so that's another important thing. Uh, so now I want to talk a little bit about the process of supercoiling. So that's the twisting of the DNA beyond the normal um, double helical arrangement okay, of DNA, because we know DNA is in a double helix, even though it's a circular chromosome. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, you know, coil this or spin it even a little bit more than what it already is. And the process is catalyzed by a DNA gyrase enzyme, okay, and also has DNA binding proteins involved in the process. So they do have a process of compacting their DNA. It's just not as useful. I mean, it's not as it's not as I shouldn't say it's useful. It is useful. It's just not as complex as what we have. So bacterial cell walls are composed of this really interesting net-like molecule. And it's known as peptidoglycan, and peptidoglycan is composed of two parts. It has a protein component and a polysaccharide component, okay? And I also want to bring up here the prokaryote cells have a 70S ribosome that consists of a small 30S subunit and a large 50S subunit. 30S subunit contains 16S ribosomal RNA. I've already said that, but I want to point that out again especially the difference that this is a 70S ribosome and we have 80S ribosomes. So you might want to start thinking about where antibiotics might function, what they might attack. So prokaryotic nucleoid, okay, so there's no membrane to separate the DNA from the cytoplasm. It's usually a single circular chromosome, obviously not in all cases, but in most cases. Now prokaryotic cells, on the other hand, they... Um, they also have this process of binary fission, okay? This is their process of reproduction, okay? That's why we can have so many bacteria generated in such a short period of time. So during binary fission, the bacteria elongate, okay? So the cell elongates, it grows, it gets larger in preparation for division, of course. Then the chromosome is, or DNA, is replicated, okay? To make two chromosomes. So we wind up with two chromosomes, which are attached to the envelope. And the membrane and cell wall then start to form between them. And that process is called septation. So what they call it is a septum. This forms in the middle. It basically divides the two cells. And once, and once that divides the two cells, they're ready to split in half to make two. 
uh, completely independent cells. And that's exactly what happens in the process of binary fission. So bacteria also have a simple RNA polymerase. They don't have a complex RNA polymerase. And the reason they have a simple RNA polymerase is because it only consists of about five un uh, subunits. Okay, um, our RNA polymerase consists of about 12 subunits, I believe. And it's much, much more complex, basically. So it has a very simple RNA polymerase. And during the process of transcription, uh, the information from DNA is copied into a molecule of messenger RNA. So transcription, DNA is copied to messenger RNA. And the enzyme reads the DNA and synthesizes a complementary RNA molecule. It's called RNA polymerase. Okay, so RNA polymerase is the enzyme that reads the DNA, copies, it makes a complementary copy of the molecule, and um, facilitates that process. So RNA polymerase is located at the beginning of the gene, okay? And if you're going to find that, you're going to find that that's the promoter region, okay? That's where it's located. That's where it wants to bind and begin the copying process. Um, it's a specific DNA sequence that marks the beginning of the gene. So bacteria have simple RNA polymerase consisting of five subunits. I have said that. And archaea have a more complex RNA polymerase, okay? Their transcription and translation machinery more so represents or, or resembles, I should say, eukaryotes than prokaryotes. So that's kind of an interesting difference between archaea and uh, bacteria. So their RNA polymerase represent or resembles a eukaryotic one. So in bacteria, transcription and translation are coupled, okay? That means that the mRNA is being transcribed by ribosomes um, that begin the process before transcription is finished, okay? Essentially, they're coupled. Um, messenger RNA is transcribed, and then the ribosomes attach and begin translation. And also, DNA could be actually being copied by, at that point as well, by DNA polymerase, but all, the bottom line is all these things are occurring in the cytosol. The cytosol is not membrane bound, so it's not separate. And all these things are in the cytosol and they're all occurring simultaneously. So transcription and translation are cellular targets for antibiotics. And I was saying we should start thinking about these antibiotics targets. And the reason they're targets is because, of course, if you stop transcription or translation, you kill the cell. All right. So if you want to stop something from doing what it, you know, from surviving, you'd want you might want to think about stopping the process of transcription and translation. And you could probably do that for two reasons. One, you have a 70s ribosome. Okay. So the process of translation is occurring on a ribosome that's not found in eukaryotic cells. So if I have an antibiotic that targets the 70s ribosome, it won't affect the 80s ribosome. It's specifically designed to target the 70S ribosome. So it's only going to affect the bacterial ribosome. Um, the other thing is the RNA polymerases are different. Okay, bacteria have this simple RNA polymerase. So of course, it's probably likely that you could attack this RNA polymerase as a site for antibiotic, um, uh, as a cellular target for antibiotics. Okay? And that's basically what I have here. So I, but as an aside here, but this is also an important point, archaea have a 70S ribosome, all right? So you might say, well, they have the same ribosome as, um, as bacteria, but that's not true. Archaea do not respond to antibiotics. Their 70S ribosome is, does not respond to antibiotics. The bacteria 70S ribosome does respond to antibiotics, okay? So it will be, bacteria will be killed if you're targeting the 70S ribosome, archaea can survive it. Um, and just a really brief thing about endosymbiosis or the endosymbiotic theory, um, the eukaryotic organelles, mitochondria and, chlor and chloroplasts are, um, most likely eukaryotic, uh, prokaryotic cells that were engulfed by, you know, primitive prokaryotic cells, okay? And, um they then formed an, a, a symbiotic uh, or a symbi some sort of, you know, 
mutual agreement, mutual arrangement, where both were benefiting equally from the um, process. And that, that was discovered again through these through this discussions of looking at the um, RNA and the ribosomal RNA because mitochondria have their own um, specific genetic material. Okay, that's not the same as, as the cells.